Okay, this is uh, general physics one, and we're in chapter eight. And chapter eight has to do with rotational motion. So rotation is almost the same as linear motion, only we are using radians per second instead of using meters per second. So we're on problem number six. Number six wants to know, a child rolls a ball, I'm going to go 3.5 meters, uh, the ball is sitting here and it makes 12 revolutions. And we want to know the diameter of the ball. Well, the circumference of the ball is pi d. So if we do 12 revolutions, we're doing 12 pi d revolutions. And, uh, and that has to be equal to 3.5 meters. So the diameter of the ball has to be 3.5 meters divided by pi, 12 pi. 3.5, 3.5 divided by 12 divided by pi. Uh, so it looks like, um, We'll call it uh, 9.3 centimeters. So that's a pretty small ball. Yeah, that's what it is. 9.3 centimeters. Okay, well, number 12. Calculate the angular velocity of the Earth. Okay, so A, we want the angular velocity of the Earth around the Sun. So we're going to go 2 pi in 365 and a quarter days. And we're going to multiply that by um, 1 day per 24 hours times one hour per 60 minutes times one minute per 60 seconds. And when we get done, we're going to have radians per second. Okay, so 2 times pi divided by 365.25 divided by 24, divided by 60 squared. And we're going to have um, 1, 2. We're going to have 2.0 times 10 to the ninth, minus 9, radians per second. And then we're going to look at part B, the Earth going around its axes. So we have the same 2 pi per one day. So that would be my first answer times 365.25, which is still in my calculator, times 365.25. And now we have um, 7.3 times 10 to the minus fifth radians per second. Is how fast the Earth is going. Okay, so that's uh, 12. Coming up on number um, 19. A pilot in a test rig is um, whirling around a human centrifuge one minute, so one minute for 23 revolutions. All right, what was its angular acceleration? What is the final angular speed? Okay, so angular acceleration is in uh, radians per second squared. Then we have um, twenty-three revolutions. Twenty-three complete revolutions. Okay, um, and angular velocity is equal to uh, initial velocity plus angular acceleration t, and my position 
is going to be at times t is an initial position plus initial velocity t plus one half angular acceleration t squared. Now, one minute implies 60 seconds. My initial position is zero. My initial velocity is zero. So 23 times 2 pi gives me the number of radi uh, radians, 1 half alpha 10, 1, 60, 60 squared. Okay, I got one equation, one unknown. Alpha is equal to 2 times 23 times 2 pi divided by 60 squared. 2 times 23 times 2 times pi divided by 60 squared. And I'm going to have uh, 80.3 times 10 to the minus third radians per second is my angular acceleration. Okay, now I want to know my ending speed. So omega at, at 60 is going to equal omega naught, which is 0, uh, plus um, 80.3 times 10 to the minus third times 60 seconds. It's already in my calculator times 60, and I'm going to be going uh, 4.8. 4.8 radians per second when I am at speed. All right, well, that's all we wanted to know. Number 21. A wheel is 31 centimeters in diameter. So I got this wheel. 0.31 meters, because I like meters better, accelerates uniformly from 4 to 40, 240 RPM to 360 RPM. Do you know the conversion RPM to, rad to radians per second? Mm. All right. So, if I have 2 pi radians per 60 seconds and I multiply that by oh that's what I have so that's going to be pi over 30 okay so if I if I take this guy and multiply him by pi over 30 or do I divide by pi over 30 no I multiply by pi over 30 um, if I multiply them by pi over 30, I'm going to end up with radians per second. Pi over 30. So this guy is going to end up as uh, 8 pi radians per second, and this guy is going to end up as 12 pi radians per second. So that's the same number as, as when you divide by 3.6 to go from kilometers per hour to meters per second. You have a conversion thing you're always going to be using to get to radians per second to from uh, revolution per minute. Anyway, now that we know that, why don't we do the problem? Uh, it's doing this in six seconds, 6.8 seconds. So my um, angular velocity at 6.8 seconds is going to be equal to my original one plus alpha t. So I've got that uh, 12 pi is equal to 8 pi plus 6.8 alpha. And I throw that over there, so I got 4 pi divided by 6.8 is equal to 
1.85 radians per second is my angular acceleration. Now, what did I want to do? Okay, now that I know my angular acceleration, I can find uh, my uh, number of radians that I moved. How far, how far will a point on the edge of the wheel travel? Okay, so we're not going to get that yet, but I need the number of radians anyway. So I got um, the initial, which is 0, plus uh, 8 pi times 6.8 plus 1 half um, 1.85 times 6.8 squared. And that's going to give me the number of radians that I've traveled. Okay, now I have angular acceleration in here already, so I'm going to multiply it. Uh, I have, yes, yeah, so I'm going to go times 6.8 squared divided by 2 plus 8 times pi times 6.8. And I'm going to come up with 213.6 radians. And my the distance is going to be, um, I'm looking for, it, the, the, the distance is going to be the circumference times theta number well uh, it's going to be r r theta distance is going to be r theta and um, so I'll multiply r okay so I got point one five five thirty one divided by two yeah point one five five um, meters times two one three points point six and I got the point in the right place the first time uh, two one three point six radians okay so I got uh, point one five five times two one three point six and I got 33.1 meters. And then I ask myself, self, how many significant digits do I have? And I only have two significant digits, so I can, my final answer would have to be 33 meters because I only have two significant digits. All right, number 24. A person, 52 kilograms, is riding a bike, puts all her weight on the pedal, climbing up the hill. The pedal rotates radius 0.17 meters. Uh, what is the maximum torque? Torque is force over a distance. The torque, what force would be 52 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 0.17 meters would be my maximum torque. Eighty-six point six. Um, I only have two significant digits, so I call it eighty-seven. Eighty-seven meter kilogram. Meter newtons, newton meters, meter newtons, and you can't uh, you can't put you have to have a dot there to say otherwise it looks like milli newtons, and that would not be good. Okay, so there's my A answer. B answer. What could she do? Well, she held on to the can on the handlebars and and pulled up while she was pushing down. The force could be bigger. So that's the B answer. Going on to number 30. What was the one, sir? She's holding on to the handlebars, pushing down, pulling up on the handlebars as she's pushing down. She could get more force on it. Okay. Because the other way, she's just putting her weight on it. 
when she puts all her weight on it, that's one thing, but when you muscle it, then you can have something else. Number 30, determine the moment of inertia of uh, 10.8 kilograms sphere uh, radius um, 0.648 meters and uh, about the center of rotation. Okay, so we have to move back in the book. I think it's on page 210. And on 210 is our moment of inertial table, and it says the moment of inertia for a sphere is um, 2 fifths m r squared. Okay, so I got um, 2 fifths mass radius squared 2 divided by 5 times 10.8 times 0.648 squared and then I got uh, 1.81 the three significant digits and uh, kilograms meters squared That's all there is for 30. 34. A grinding wheel is a uniform cylinder radius 0 0.085 meters. Uh, mass 0 0.380 kilograms. Calculate the moment of inertia about the center. Okay, so we go back again to page 210. And we find um, that uh, a solid cylinder, the moment of inertia is one half m r squared. So one half mass 0.38 times r 0 0.085 squared. got uh, 1.37 times 10 to the minus third uh, kilograms meters squared. Okay, so that's the A answer. Now we're looking for the B answer. The apply, what's the applied torque needed to go to uh, 1750 Okay, so we want to take 1750 RPM and we want to change it to radians per second. So we're going to take pi divided by 30. So uh, 1750 divided by 30, 58 and a third pi radians per second is how fast we're going to go. Um, and it does it in five seconds. Now, we have some uh, frictional torque and that we're going to have to worry about first. So we have some force of friction happening here. And so if we go pi over 30 times 1500 RPM, we end up with um, 50. 50 pi radians per second is uh, my initial my fi my um, initial angular um, velocity, and I do that in 55 seconds. So I say, well, zero is going to be uh, 50 pi uh, plus alpha t. So alpha is going to be uh, minus 50 pi over 55 um, <clears throat> minus 10 over 11 pi uh, radians per second squared. All right, so now we come back up to this first issue and the first issue is what is the alpha that I need 
to go from 58 from 0 to 58 and a third in 5 seconds. All right, so if I have 0 is equal to 58 and a third pi plus alpha 5, except the it's going to be another way around. This is 0 and this is 58 and a third radians per second and it's pi. Um, so my, my alpha that I need is going to be 58 and a third divided by 5. So uh, 58 and one third divided by 5. So I say I have 11 and 2 thirds pi radians per second squared. Now, because I have some frictional torque uh, there, I'm going to have to have more than that. So my, my alpha applied is going to have to be that 11 and 2 thirds pi. And then I'm going to have to add some more to overcome the friction over 11. And now I've got um, plus 10 divided by 11. So I've got 12.57 repeating pi radians per second squared. And it wants to know how much torque I'm applying. My torque is um, alpha times the distance. And so I've got that 12.57 uh, repeating pi times my distance. And the distance is the radius, which is 0 0.085, 0 0.085 meters. All right, so I got that number times pi times 0 0.085 and I end up with 3.36 3.36 uh, meters force newtons, meter newtons, newton meters okay so that's 34, 41's next, 41, a dad pushes tangentially on a small variable round and is uh, able to accelerate it from 0 to five, 15, 15 RPM, so I go 15 RPM times pi over 30, and so that's pi over 2 radians per second in 10 seconds. Assume the variable around is uniform disk. So radius is uh, 2.5 meters and mass is uh, 560 kilograms. Uh, and it has two children at opposite ends. Uh, so their radius is also 2.5 meters, and their mass at, uh, for each of them is going to be 25 kilograms. Uh, calculate the torque required to produce this acceleration neglecting friction. What force is required on the edge? All right, so where were we? Uh, we need to know the uh, inertia total. So the inertia total is going to be the inertia of the merrier round plus the two times the inertia of a child. So that's what we're looking for. We'll go back to page 210 to figure out the inertia of a disk. And uh, it is one half pi r squared. So we have so one half mass, we hard. You bet. mass times the radius squared plus two times and it's a point thing so it'd be mass times 2.5 and uh, so now we have an inertia of uh, 0.5 times 560 times 2.5 squared plus 
two times 25 times 2.5 squared, even though I didn't put the square there. So my total inertia is 2.0625 times 10 to the third. Um, that's going to be in um, kilograms meters squared. Now, uh, another formula for torque is um, another formula for torque is that uh, torque is I alpha is I alpha. Alright, so uh, what are we trying to calculate anyway? This is 41 maybe? Yeah, this is 41. The calculate torque. the torque. Okay, so I know what alpha, I need to know alpha. Alright, so omega at times t is omega naught plus alpha t. So omega at times t is going to be um, pi over 2 gradients per second and omega naught is 0 plus alpha and it takes me 10 seconds to get there. So my alpha is pi over 20. Okay, so my torque is going to be my moment of inertia 2.0625 times 10 to the third times pi over 2 times pi divided by 2. So my moment of inertia is 3.24 uh, meter newton meters. Okay, so that's my A answer. And then my, uh, the second part is um, what force? Well, torque is also force over a distance, so the force would be torque divided by distance, so I would take my number and divide it by, oh this is times 10 to the third in case anybody was wondering, divided by my distance which is the radius which is 2.5, divided by 2.5. So the force will be 1.29 times 10 to the third newtons. Okay, so that's 41. Going on to number uh, 43. In 43, we have uh, three rotor blades. Each of them are. Um, have a length of 3.75 meters, and each of them has a weight, a mass, of 135 kilograms. And uh, we want to yeah, blah, 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 blah. calculate the moment of inertia. All right, so the moment of inertia, I, is equal to, uh, we have to move back to page 210. And 210 says the moment of inertia is one third ml squared. Seeing that there's three of them, I can multiply that by three kilograms times 3.75 meters squared. And get a moment of inertia of. One point nine zero times ten to the third um, kilograms so meters squared. You wouldn't have to have a. Um, how much torque must be applied to get a speed of sixty revolutions per second in eight seconds? All right, so. 66, six revolutions. So I want 12 pi radians per second. So omega and sometimes t is omega naught plus alpha t. Okay, so I want 12 pi radians per second, zero plus alpha times eight. So my alpha 
is going to be um, three halves pi radians per second squared. And how much torque? So torque is going to be I alpha. And so that would be uh, 1.9010 to the third meters squared kilograms times 2, 3, 3 over 2 pi radians per second squared. And my answer is going to be in uh, Newton meters times 2, 3, divided by 2, times pi. Okay, so I've got 8.95 times 10 to the third Newton meters is going to be the torque required to get there. Number 2048. Okay, number 48. A hammer is accelerated. Okay. Control-Alt, 